everyone, welcome to all of you. You're watching Tech24. In this edition, we tell you how startups are trying to find new ways of harnessing the power of the wind and waves, some by using biomimicry, or how to emulate nature's patterns and strategies. And in Test24, we ogle at the new iPad Pro with its amazing fast M1 chip and liquid retina display. But we have to ask, what is all that power for? But first, let's take a look at Vortex Bladeless, a Spanish startup that has developed a new kind of wind turbine without blades. Its low cost, little need for maintenance and innovative technology all make the invention promising for the renewable energy sector. Claire Rush tells us more. A wind turbine without blades. Instead of rotating or spinning, this piece of machinery oscillates or wobbles to produce energy. What it does is it collects the kinetic energy of the wind and transforms it into electricity. It's a very simple machine. It's slender and vertical. We moved it away from the ground so that the wind speed is as high as possible. Easy to install, the bladeless turbine is low maintenance and low cost, providing electricity at roughly a third of the cost of conventional wind energy sources. What we want is to try to find a niche that is not properly covered by conventional wind power. That niche could be the small wind industry. It is low maintenance, low cost, and doesn't need oil. All of these elements could make a useful tool for distributing and producing energy close to the point of consumption. The Spanish startup Vortex Bladeless was launched in 2015. Since then, it's been working to develop the bladeless turbine with the hope of commercializing it. Currently being tested at the University of Salamanca, the most recent prototype is geared towards use in urban areas. They're silent and don't require maintenance, which makes them suitable for urban environments. They could also be used for traffic signals and sensors that use electricity. We think there is a niche market that so far has not been developed. In the long term, Vortex Bladeless hopes its invention will also be used in the offshore wind industry. And let me now introduce our tech editor, Peter O'Brien. Hello, Peter. Hi, Julia. So you have uh, other examples of unexpected ways to harness wind energy. I do. The first idea I'm going to point out is that some engineers have been looking at actually reducing the number of blades. We've been so used to seeing three blades go round for ages now, but in fact, some are looking into having just two. Seawind is one example, and they claim that their solution has lower torque and therefore spins faster and generates more electricity. Others think that flipping the turbine on its head and having a vertical axis instead, axis instead is the way to go. Um, Oxford Brooks claims that this type of turbine has been overlooked because usually they're tested one by one alongside a traditional turbine. But in fact, when they're paired up, they can generate up to 15% more power. And if one axis isn't enough, well, how about two? This is the O-Wind turbine. It's actually a James Dyson award winner, and it spins in the same way regardless of what direction the wind is coming from. So it could be useful in urban areas where the wind is very unpredictable. This is a concept which gets rid of spinning entirely and uses a big kite which sits way up above sea level to access the really powerful winds. It's hydro wind energy and is harnessed to a subsea generator. If all else fails though, you can just go bigger. This is a Vestas wind turbine, one of their newly announced ones, and it has 15 megawatts of offshore power that it can generate, which is enough to power 20,000 European households. Now, Peter, this is more of a technical question, but how do you actually get up there to service these huge turbines? Well, it's something I've always wanted to do. You're sent up in a helicopter, you then rappel down onto this tiny platform. How terrifying must that be, by the way? And you get in a little hatch to service it. Um, Interestingly enough, one of the main barriers for more female workers in the offshore wind industry is a lack of toilets, because these things don't have toilets inside. Um, so in comes Pegasus Welfare Solutions, who've just pat patented the world's first in-turbine toilet, which is way above the waves. I dread to think, though, what the men have been doing up until this point. 
because it's very, very windy up there. I don't even want to think about that, yeah, Peter, no. <laughs> but thank you. Who would have thought that inclusion would actually go through some more toilets? Yeah. Thank you for that, Peter. Now, some startups are trying to find more sustainable ways of creating energy, and some are actually looking to nature to find the most efficient mechanisms. Finding inspiration in nature is nothing new. It's called biomimicry. It's powerful because everything nature has decided to keep over the course of billions of years of evolution and through a tough selection process is only the most efficient systems. Now, one example of biomimicry is eel energy. They found their inspiration in the way that fish move so effortlessly through the water to create a renewable source of energy. Well, let's cross over to the CEO of Eel Energy, Franck Sylvain. Thanks for joining us here on TAC24. Hello, Julia. Thanks for inviting me. So could you tell us more about how eel energy works and why you decided to imitate how fish move through water? Yes, it uh, sounds logical to, uh, to look at uh, how uh, fish are undulating and moving forward under water. And we take this inspiration to harness uh, the energy of the current with an undulating structure it's an undulating, uh, it's a membrane that which is bended, and then we, when you put it into the current, it starts uh, undulating exactly like uh, like a fish in, is undulating, and so we have a lot of force and speed, and so a lot of power to harness. Now you're still in the testing phase. What are the preliminary results of the efficiency of the system? Yes, we are on a natural site in north of France, into a canal, and uh, we have two devices now uh, undulating and producing electricity. Uh, the second one has just been put in, the, in this canal uh, early May with a lot of uh, intelligence on board, and uh, the machine is smarter and smarter, delivering clean energy. And these two devices together uh, roughly give uh, around one megawatt per, per month, one megawatt hour, which is which can supply uh, around 10, uh, 10 homes uh, with electricity. Now, Frank, what's interesting in your concept is that you're creating electricity around the clock. Yes, uh, in, uh, in a river, we have no intermittence as we have water in the river. We are going to produce 24 seven electricity in the ocean. It's even better. We know exactly when and how much clean electricity we are going to, uh, to produce. On top of that, we have no noise and no visual pollution. We are not harming wildlife. And we have been working on our device to have a 100% recyclable device. Franck Sylvain, the CEO of Eel Energy, thank you for that. Thank you very much, Julia. And it's time now for Test 24. And on the set of Test24 this week, we have the latest iPad. It's the iPad Pro M1. Peter, what's the improvement on the previous generation? So it's all about this new Apple M1 chip, which makes it roughly as powerful as the MacBook Air, which is a full-blown computer. It has eight cores of CPU, eight cores of GPU, and up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is just ridiculous. Um, so it blazes through the operating system and any app you pretty much throw at it. Um, it's actually around a third faster than the last iPad Pro, which was already the fastest tablet on the market. So the upgrade is just absurd. It's just, it's just such a spec bump. Right, so it's got the speed. What else? Yeah, so it's all, also got this um, remarkable display, unfortunately only on the biggest kind, which is the 12.9 inch. It's actually a mini LED display. So it's got 10,000 tiny LEDs in it, which makes it very bright and also makes the contrast very good as well, even better than an OLED. Another fun feature which I like to show is the new ultra wide um, selfie camera. So this, you can probably see yourself in this studio because it's so wide. And this is great for things like video calls. Right. The one thing that's kind of still dated for me, in fact, is the operating system. You know, it's been pretty much the same on the iPad for years and years and years now. So we're really due for an upgrade. And I'm hoping there will be a big upgrade at Apple's WWDC 21, which is their conference starting on the 7th of June. Now, there's also a keyboard attachment, which begs the question of why it's not simply 
a laptop? Yeah, it's the perennial question when it comes to the iPad. Uh, the keyboard comes to 339 euros, so it better feel really good to type on. And it does, it's very satisfying. For me, at least on a table, not so much on your lap where it tends to wobble around. Um, but at that price, along with the iPad, you do ask yourself, well, why not get something like a MacBook um, Air, which can do much the same stuff um, in a lighter package even. Um, there's also other options. Obviously, you can get um, all, sorts, all sorts of different uh, laptops. And these um, things, which of which there are many nowadays, which is this um, uh, mini desktop PC. So you can stick this in your bag, bring it with you, and plug it into a display anywhere you go. This one happens to be the French brand Cube, but there are lots of them. And while they can't run very highly intensive games or anything like that, they are very good at just the office suite. But I guess some, people just, some people's workflow just calls for a touchscreen, of course, um, and lots of other people just like having a touchscreen. Thank you very much, Peter, for that. It brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech24. You can watch it again on our website, france24.com. See you soon.